It's hard to believe, but it's been estimated that as much as 95% of our planet's land mass has been modified by humans in some way, with 17% classified as being either highly or very highly impacted. There's no doubt that as a species we've left a long-lasting mark on the world, but Mother Nature is fighting back. Human structures that aren't well maintained will inevitably begin to decay, and the trees, plant life, and animals that were once cleared out of the way for construction will slowly start reappearing. With that in mind, let's take a journey around the world to visit awe-inspiring sights and dark memories of the past as we look at 15 places reclaimed by nature. Number 15. Chemin de Fer de Petite Ceinture, Paris, France. The Chemin du Fer de Petite Ceinture, which translates to mean the Smaller Belt Railway, was a circular route that was built in Paris in the 1850s and 60s that formed a full circle around the city and connected the main railway stations. It became one of the first commuter railways in the world, carrying workers to where they needed to be, and it was the main means of transport in the city until 1900, when the first metro line opened. The final passenger train traveled the tracks in 1934, and the railway was kept in operation until the 1980s for freight transport. But since then, the vast majority of the line hasn't been used at all, which means nature has moved back in. It's taken some time for this transformation to happen, but some parts of the railway now look like they're from a fairy tale. One stretch, which runs through the Mansouri Park, has been completely overgrown with vegetation that's reached in from its surroundings and has, in recent years, become a popular photo opportunity for urban explorers. There are plans to reopen stretches of the route as a part of a new transport link, but that would surely be a shame because the combination of human structures and nature is an incredible sight to behold. Number 14. Ta Prom, Siem Rip, Cambodia with such a rich cultural history, Cambodia is covered with countless temples and ancient structures, and due to limited upkeep during periods in the past, some of them have become a fascinating combination of traditional design with the ever-approaching greenery of the surrounding jungle. Due to its humid climate, plant growth is faster here than in many other places, and this means nature has been able to run its course far sooner than it would be able to in cooler climates. One of the best examples in the country is the Taprom Temple, which is in the city of Siem Reap. Built in the traditional Bayon style during the 12th and 13th centuries, it was originally a Mahayana Buddhist monastery. Once home to about 12,000 people, along with a further 80,000 in the surrounding area, vast riches were once stored there, but was largely forgotten following the fall of the Khmer Empire in the 15th century. While many of the other structures in the country from the same time period have been restored as much as possible in recent years, Taprom remains largely as it was found. Because of the unique aesthetic of the place with the way that the trees and vegetation have taken hold. Described as being merged with the jungle, but not yet part of it, it's now on the UNESCO World Heritage List and is one of the most popular tourist sites in this part of Cambodia. Number 13. San Juan Parangari Kutro, Mexico the San Juan Parangari Cuturo was a village in the Mexican state of Michoacan and was once a hive of activity in the area. Only parts of it still stand, though, particularly the remains of the church, and it serves as a reminder of the power of nature. According to a local legend, a new volcano began to emerge from the ground on a warm day in February of 1943, and the two villages on its slopes were quickly covered in molten lava and ash. The eruption was so powerful that the bells of the San Juan Parangari Cuturo were ringing by themselves. Despite being more than two miles away from the new peak, and eventually things calmed down until the air was silent. At first, the villagers thought they had escaped the danger, but the Paracutin volcano kept releasing a steady stream of lava. In fact, this would continue for the following eight years, but it only took 11 months for it to reach the village. It began to consume everything in sight, from the stone walls of the buildings to the graves and the churchyard and virtually all signs of life. But miraculously, the church managed to endure it all. To this day, the church is still there, although partially concealed beneath the solidified lava. In the distance, on a clear day, you can see the cone of the volcano, which is one of the youngest in the world, and nothing else is left of the village at all. The incredible sight and the story behind it means that tourist trips to the church have become a major source of income for people who live nearby. You would just better hope that if you go there yourself one day, that the volcano stays as quiet as it has been for the past 70 years. Number 12. New World Shopping Mall, 
Bangkok, Thailand. Before the prevalence of the internet, the only way to buy things we needed or wanted was to go to a physical store, and this led to a surge, particularly in the 90s, in the construction of huge shopping malls to house multiple stores close to one another. In Bangkok, Thailand, the New World Shopping Mall was one of the biggest and the most famous, but an inspection in 1997 found there to be serious flaws in how it had been built, so it was forced to close. It was left standing there without any maintenance, and things got worse a couple of years later when a fire broke out and the ceiling collapsed. Now, open to the elements, the mall began to fill up with a large pool of stagnant water, and this became the perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes. This, of course, was a serious concern to local residents, and they introduced some freshwater tilapia fish in the hope that it would eat some of the insects. What they hadn't bargained for was how successful this would prove to be, and there are now thousands of fish swimming around in the mall pond, venturing through abandoned stores and rusting escalators. It's now become so famous that it's even supporting local businesses that sell fish food to visitors who want to go there into the mall and have a chance to feed the inhabitants of the subterranean lake. Number 11. The Hobrek Mühl Lighthouse, Denmark with construction beginning in 1899 and being completed the following year, when the torch was first lit, the Hobjaknud Lighthouse, which is on the coast of the North Sea in the Danish municipality of Hjøring, became integral to local shipping routes. Originally built on a cliff at a height of 200 feet or 60 meters above sea level, you certainly wouldn't believe that now, because it currently stands noticeably inland. This is because this part of the coastline is particularly susceptible to erosion and shifting sands, so much so that it's being worn away at a rate of around 5 feet or 1.5 meters per year. The 75-foot or 23-meter tall lighthouse, which weighs a reported 735 tons, stopped being used as a light in 1968, but remained open as a museum and a cafe, which is when it realized that the structure was slowly sinking into the sand. Along with the buildup of sand that had been blown onto the walls, the owners were forced to close it completely in 2002 because of the risk of injury, and some of the supporting buildings had to be removed because of the increasing pressure being exerted on them by the sand. It was estimated that by 2023 the lighthouse would have collapsed over the cliff or succumbed to the enormous strain that it was being put under, so in 2019 a $750,000 project began to move the entire structure on rails 230 feet inland. While this, in theory, will protect it for a further 40 years, nature has already began to cover it with sand once more, and this time there's very little anyone can do about it. Number 10. Kawaminami Shipyard, Japan the Kawaminami Shipyard, which is in Imari Harbor in the Saga Prefecture of Japan, was originally opened as a glass factory that would process the imported raw material and then ship it around the country. During the Second World War, however, it was taken over by the Kawaminami Industrial Corporation that used it to build ships and weapons. When the war ended, military production in the country was shut down, and instead of being repurposed, which was hardly a priority as Japan began to rebuild, the factory was left abandoned and soon fell into a state of disrepair. Surrounded by fertile land and with the winds that blew in from across the ocean, the environment was perfect for nature to begin reclaiming the site, and as the concrete structure began to crumble, it was replaced with greenery. Today, it acts as a memorial to the wartime industry, but also to how temporary anything that we build actually is. A place that once employed thousands of people was a hub of the port, now looks almost like an ancient monument like you'd expect to find in thick jungle. Number 9. Mount Moriah Cemetery, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania First established in 1855, the Mount Moriah Cemetery in Philadelphia became the largest in the state. Covering an area of 200 acres, it was the final resting place of more than 150,000 people, and unlike other cemeteries, allowed for any member of society to be buried there, no matter their race, their religion, or their background. It was in use for more than 150 years, but in 2011, after the death of the only member on the board of directors, it was forced to close. With no management and no one taking responsibility for its maintenance, the building soon began to fall into a state of disrepair. This was made worse when people started to use it to illegally dump waste, and without anyone tending to the plants and trees, it became overgrown with vegetation. Despite the efforts by some to return the site to its former glory, it's proven to be simply too large to clear up, and it's now verging on being a lost cause. 
It remains a simply stunning place though, and arguably even more so now that it's covered in greenery, and has become a popular place for urban explorers who, while they fight through the undergrowth, will come across various statues and memorials to fallen soldiers. Number 8. Ho Tui Ten, Hue, Vietnam Featuring lazy rivers, huge plunging slides, wave pools, and plenty more, water parks are some of the most popular venues in the world thanks to the mix of excitement, relaxation, and the ability to cool off in hot weather. It seemed then a no-brainer to open a new park in Hue, Vietnam, which is a notoriously hot and humid part of the world. But unfortunately for the investors, things didn't entirely go to plan. After reportedly spending $3 million on the venture, the Ho Tui Tien Water Park first opened in 2004 with a huge three-story dragon aquarium at the center, which was full of sharks, rays, fish, and crocodiles, and just a few of the promised slides. The park had opened before it was completed because it had been delayed and they needed to try to raise funds, but this decision forever tarnished its reputation and they simply weren't able to attract the number of visitors they needed to become viable. Just two years later, it was closed for good, and nature immediately began moving back into the site. Without any maintenance, the central dragon aquarium began to crumble, which released the crocodiles into the surrounding lake, where they still live. And from recent images, you'd be forgiven for thinking that this was an ancient water park that was built several hundred years ago. One unintended consequence of the park's failure is that it still attracts a surprising number of visitors, but instead of being people wanting to try the slides, they're urban explorers who want to venture deep within this overgrown wilderness. Number 7. Whitnoom, Western Australia Located around 880 miles or about 1400 kilometers to the northeast of Perth in Australia, Whitnoom was a town that was originally incorporated in 1950 as a company town for workers in the mines in the nearby gorge. At its peak, it had 881 residents, and the mine became the country's only producer of blue asbestos, a material that at the time was in high demand, but would soon be discovered to be extremely dangerous. The market for asbestos completely collapsed, and this means there was no way that the mine or the town could be profitable, so it was closed and all the people who lived there had no choice but to move away. A few people held out, but the town has now officially been unincorporated, and because of the mining that happened there, there's serious concern about the long-term health effects of spending any time in the vicinity whatsoever. Most of the buildings there have been demolished, and this has paved the way for the sands of the outback to blow back in. But despite this, there are still reportedly three residents. They, of course, don't have anything to do with mining activities, but instead make a living from the thousands of people that visit the town each year as a form of extreme tourism. Number 6. Kormanskop, Namibia The abandoned ghost town of Kormanskop, which is in Namibia, was first inhabited in 1908, when the land was part of German Southwest Africa. Located 6 miles or about 10 kilometers inland from the port of Luderitz, it was chosen as a site for a settlement after a railway worker in the area found a diamond in the sand, and the German Empire used it to support the mine that they built. It was incredibly fruitful, and for a time the town was very wealthy, and further developed in the same architectural style as you'll see across Germany. The town featured a hospital, a ballroom, a power station, a school, a casino, and even an ice factory. But by the Second World War, the majority of the precious stones had been retrieved. There was soon no reason to live in the middle of the desert, especially as other rich diamond deposits had been found elsewhere. So the residents moved away, and by the mid-1950s, there was hardly anyone left. By 1956, it was all but abandoned, and since then the desert has been able to reclaim the land. Today, it's a creepy and mysterious place that feels like an old town that's been frozen in time, but the arid climate has actually helped to preserve the buildings. It's now a popular destination for photographers and film crews, but not for tourists, because access to that region of the desert is highly restricted and impossible without a permit. Number 5. Valle dei Mulini, Sorrento, Italy Deep within the hills of Sorrento, Italy, is the Valle dei Mulini, which is a historic valley that was first inhabited as early as the 13th century. 
A series of flour mills were built there, which were constructed from stone that was quarried locally, along with a sawmill, all of which made use of the stream that flows through the valley to power the heavy machinery. This allowed the businesses to provide supplies to the surrounding regions, and they remained in operation for a hundred years. It was only in the 20th century, with more efficient mills having opened elsewhere, that the ones in the valley became obsolete, so they were forced to close, and the entire valley was abandoned. Because of the naturally human conditions there, it didn't take long for vegetation to begin re-establishing itself, and the valley has turned into a picturesque premonition of what the entire world will probably look like in thousands of years when humans have gone. It's now a popular spot that offers some of the best views of the Sorrento Peninsula, and has such historical importance that locals recently voted for the mills to be restored. This is a project that's currently underway, so it's possible that nature will be pushed out again within a decade. Number 4. Ross Island, India Ross Island is a part of the Andaman Island chain in the Bay of Bengal, which is a territory owned by India. After first being discovered by the British in the late 18th century, the island has been used for a number of purposes, from being a penal colony to a military base and a prisoner of war camp. During the Second World War, it was captured by Japanese forces who relinquished the land when the war ended. And since then, under the control of the Indian government, it's been virtually abandoned and has slowly been reclaimed by nature. Officially, there are still 10 residents there, and they support the tourism industry for visitors who want to see a practically pristine desert island or explore the ruins that have crumbled away and been covered in plants and trees. It's amazing to walk around the buildings that in some cases are more than 200 years old, with roots and branches hanging from every ledge they can hold on to. Number 3. Haotuang, China Haotuang was a very successful fishing town on the Shengshan Island off the eastern coast of China, and at its peak in the 1980s had a population of more than 3,000 people. It is, however, in an extremely hard-to-reach place, and it became increasingly difficult to deliver the catch to the mainland. So workers began moving away to more profitable alternatives in the 1990s. By 2002, it had officially been depopulated and merged with a nearby village, and now, with no remaining residents, the structures have been left to crumble away and be overgrown with foliage. After being left like this for several decades, the ocean-facing village is now an amazing sight. It almost seems as if the buildings have been made from plants and shrubs. Images of the town went viral a few years ago, and this suddenly increased the number of people wanting to travel there to see it with their own eyes, something that's caused problems for the local tourism industry because it was in no way prepared to accommodate so many guests. They've now got their act together, however, and with the installation of viewing platforms and guided tours, it's open to anyone who wants the chance to walk around this serene and relaxing town. Number 2. Nazi Murphy Ranch, California The Second World War saw the Nazis trying to take over as much territory as they could to inflict their way of life upon everyone. Luckily, fighting never made its way to the mainland of the U.S., but that doesn't mean their influence didn't reach that far. In fact, there were many people betting on them to win the war and had already made preparations to welcome them to the country, two of whom were Winona and Norman Stevens. They built a base for use by the Nazis in Rustic Canyon, Los Angeles at the Murphy Ranch, and it was designed to be a self-sustaining compound that had a large water storage tank a bomb shelter, and a number of different support buildings. The day after the attack on Pearl Harbor, though, local police raided the site and arrested the 50 people that were present there at the time, and from that point it lay abandoned. With the buildings now either demolished or covered in graffiti, the ranch has been left to decay for more than 70 years, and now it's being slowly reclaimed by nature. It's a frightening monument to how close the world was to being very different and a reminder about how dangerous evil philosophies can be. Number 1. Chernobyl Exclusion Zone, Belarus The disaster that struck the Chernobyl power plant in 1986 changed the lives of everyone in the nearby vicinity forever, as well as having a major impact on the surrounding environment, but perhaps not in the way that you might expect. After the evacuation of the towns within the affected perimeter, the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone was established, and access to this has for a long time been highly restricted. 
stretching 18 miles or 30 kilometers in every direction around the former power plant, there are officially just 197 residents, known as Samosle, who exercise their rights to stay in their homes. This has essentially made the area unusual in that it's such a naturally fertile place, but has an extremely low population density. And researchers have been able to see what happens in inhabitants like these when they aren't being constantly interfered with by human activity. While the cities, towns, and amusement parks, which are slowly being covered in vines and greenery, may be the most interesting places for extreme tourists, photographers, and historians, animal species that have virtually gone extinct are now recovering. It's quickly becoming one of the most biodiverse regions in the country. Of course, the background radiation is still higher than it is elsewhere, which leads to the troubling conclusion that human activity is far more damaging to the natural world than a nuclear disaster. Watch our nature playlist for more top 15 videos about beautiful nature. Sit back, relax, and binge watch all of our best nature videos.